Hi, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Living Life at Life You. I am your host, Dr. Veronica Garcia, and today we are joined with Dr. James Bush from the online program at Life University and program coordinator. Yes. Hi, welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. Hi. I'd love to, to, that you took some of your time to be here with us today. Talk to us a little bit of who you are, what is your role at the university? Well, um, uh, as you stated, I'm Dr. James Bush. I am the program coordinator for the Bachelors of Business Administration mm -hmm. and what is soon to be uh, a minor in healthcare administration uh, here at Life University, specifically with the College of Online Education. I teach courses, I develop curriculum, um, and outside of this, I'm just a community activist and uh, a, a lover of healthcare mm -hmm. and healthcare administration. Amazing. What a great resource to have in the university. And I, I, explain to me, are you solely an online professor at the university or do you also do in-person teaching? Um, in the past at other universities, I have done in-person teaching. Mm -hmm. Here at Life University, I am solely an online professor. And what would be the difference between in that dynamic for you um, for a student that's going into online education and might be kind of a first timer for them? Talk to us a little bit about that. I wouldn't say there's differences. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to start off with the similarities. So uh, there are nuances that are exactly the same with on-ground versus online. Mm -hmm. uh, the person comes in and they receive data, mm -hmm. right? That data is processed. And then there's some form of um, evaluation on the data that was received mm -hmm. by the, uh, the student. In this instance, um, they go to Blackboard instead of going to the classroom. That's right. where they're receiving that information. Right. Um, uh, they, of course, still process the information the exact same way. The only difference I would say is now the student has the opportunity uh, of time. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily get the opportunity of time in a structured classroom. This classroom belongs to someone else after our hour or two hour block uh, in it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the student cannot rewind what the professor stated, right. uh, you know, as many times as they want to. So you get that that flexibility of time and repetition. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else is actually still the same. After they leave that blackboard, they get the opportunity to go back and synthesize what they've learned, mm -hmm. and then come back and, of course, perform that evaluation. Similar to them being, of course, in the classroom, they'll leave your lecture hall, go back to their dorm rooms and process what they learn and come back, of course, for an exam. So in those instances, that's where it's actually um, uh, different, but they're probably more similar than not. I want to also state that um, with online learning, uh, it opens the doors and removes barriers for, for learning. Life University has a phenomenal uh, philosophy mm -hmm. that must be shared, not not can, but must be shared with the entire world. With the College of Online Education, we now have that opportunity to share that mission with everyone globally. That's beautiful. I, well, I love you. that. Thank you for saying that, and thank you for sharing that with us. Um, what are some of those, I guess, um, benefits and disadvantages that you feel like an online student might might come might come across and how do we manage those at the at the university i say the the benefit obviously of course is the the access to the education anytime and anywhere mm -hmm. that is definitely a benefit uh, we sometimes forget that not all of our students are uh, traditional students we have many students that consider themselves non-traditional mm -hmm. um, typically the non-traditional student is one who works one who is not necessarily in their early teens or I'm sorry, correction late teens mm -hmm. um, we have tons of students who are actually out there working adults they have families Mm -hmm. They have, of course, careers that they don't necessarily want to leave in order to receive that education, mm -hmm. like here at Life University. So uh, one of the advantages is, uh, advantages of taking, of course, an online course would be that I can do this after work. I could still you know, be a mother to my kids right. and, of course, receive the education that I so wanted to do back when I was 18 or 19 years old. So that is definitely an advantage. I would probably say maybe a, a disadvantage is for those students or those learners who love an in-classroom setting. Mm -hmm. If you are a learner that requires a, an in-classroom setting, you have to, of course, see someone face-to-face. -face. Obviously, online learning is not necessarily the platform that you need to use or right. uh, that would be the best uh, solution for you. Right. 
I absolutely and and as a person that has both done part right. of an undergraduate online and part of a, a, a in person and I did my full chiropractic program mm -hmm. in person I definitely understood yes. that I was an in person student <laughs> yes. yes but now that you know in in a, in a beautiful newer different evolved exactly. era it it it's interesting that I'm like, hold on, I can go back and do my master's from my phone while I still manage my practice mm -hmm. and still be able to be at home, have time with my puppies, with my partner, et cetera. Exactly, exactly. Uh, myself uh, included, I was a traditional student for my undergrad yeah. and for my master's and for my, my doctorate, I also was an online student. Uh, master's was hybrid and uh, doctorate was fully, uh, fully online. Wow. I couldn't imagine 18 year old James uh, trying mm -hmm. to do something online. I had poor time management skills. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> I was not the one to follow through with uh, with pretty much anything at 18 years old versus my much more adult self uh, going to graduate school and, of course, uh, obtaining my doctorate uh, where I, I had a whole responsibility. I had a whole life. I didn't right. want to stop my life to, uh, right. to go to school. Uh, of course, I love school and I want you to stop your life. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, obviously, I didn't want to walk away from my career right. and uh, obtain my education. I was able to travel the United States. I was a traveling trainer mm -hmm. um, for a health uh, health information technology corporation mm -hmm. uh, company, and uh, I was able to be on the road in all fifty states and still obtain my education. I would spend many late hours up writing papers uh, after I've already worked with my clients and uh, at those facilities wow. to to get to where I, where I wanted to get to. So wow, that's admirable. Congratulations thank you. No, thank on doing you. so. Congratulations. And and talk to me about health information management. What exactly does that entail? Ooh, so uh, it is the, um, I think if we think about the Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. it's the the, it is the guy behind mm -hmm. the uh, all the smoke and mirrors. So uh, more often than not, mm -hmm. those in the admin roles of healthcare mm -hmm. don't necessarily get the praises that, of <laughs> course, uh, those who wear the scrubs do. Right. You know, of course, uh, patient care is uh, the the headliners of these shows. But behind that curtain is a whole team of people who are making sure that things still run, that these facilities still get paid right. uh, for their services. So health information management is literally in the title. It is the management of your uh, of your patient's information um, and all the coding uh, behind, of course, that patient information. Mm -hmm. um, it is about the behind the scenes and it actually drives a number of things everywhere from our public health. Mm -hmm. uh, most recently, obviously, we've just come out of a pandemic, a global pandemic mm -hmm. um, that affected, you know, millions of Americans uh, and millions of our, our world population, yeah. um, that information was able to be shared from country to country. Mm -hmm. That's health information. Um, if you think about just here at Life University, uh, the the if someone were to get sick here on campus, mm -hmm. the, it is, of course, our, our government officials and uh, Department of Health and Human Services that will provide that information to our campus president, who can, of course, make uh, sound judgments based off of mm -hmm. that health information. Um, it drives whether or not local facilities or hospitals uh, yes. should be placed in certain areas. Health information. Um, it, it can even, of course, save practices. So even at the uh, a private practice level, mm -hmm. when you as a chiropractor decides what community you're going to place your uh, your practice in, mm -hmm. um, what types of patients you are going to service, important. of those right, all important, mm -hmm. and of course, of those patients, what procedures can be coded and billed to the insurance carrier. Exactly. All of that is health information, and it's uh, it's really really important. It drives everything. I love that, and and I love that you say that that you started the statement with with understanding. Hey, I'll, a lot of the health information admins don't get the praise no. as the people were in the scrubs. I love that you said that because I always, always, always tell my clinic manager and admin and person, I'm like, without you, we are nothing. You understand that, right? You The the way that, that she gets to navigate and understand mm -hmm. and do continuing education and maintain that, make sure that everything in the practice is within the laws, within all our boundaries and everybody's kind of doing their job. Right. I'm like, without you, it doesn't matter how many people I snap, crackle, and pop, like it's it it's not gonna it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Exactly. Your, and your and your doors will be closed. In fact, <laughs> in two so, seconds. <laughs> in, in two seconds, because more more often than not, um, 
we went into education because we're passionate. You went, of course, into chiropractic because you're passionate about helping people. Right. Well, the, those on the admin side are passionate about making sure <laughs> that those patients, one, don't receive bills that aren't necessary, Correct. that their, their information is held secure and mm -hmm. private, and, of course, that the office doesn't close mm -hmm. <laughs> because of minor infractions or major infractions that shouldn't have been there. Exactly. I love that. And um, you mentioned something about a program coming up at Life University soon. Can you give us a little bit of a tad bit of that? I'm excited. Well, sure. Uh, again, it's about the, the person behind the curtain. Um, everyone may not desire to be uh, to be a chiropractor. Correct. Uh, however, there's a, a number of business skills. At, you as, of course, as a, a practice owner, know that is required of you once you, of course, cross that stage uh, and attempt to, uh, of course, have a private practice. Um, you kind of need to have that, that individual, or if you're not going to be that individual for yourself, know how to hire an individual who knows mm -hmm. how to manage the facility, knows, knows how, uh, the, how Medicare <laughs> Um, and or Medicaid charges, of course, uh, and the coding procedures that are required, right. what federal regulations are out there like HIPAA and the High Tech Act mm -hmm. that, of course, uh, monitor our patients' privacy and their information. Mm -hmm. um, all of those things are encompassed in a healthcare management um, uh, degree, or in this case, a healthcare management minor. So what's coming with the 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 bachelor's of business administration is a, soon to be a minor in healthcare management. Wow, that's amazing. That's exciting. It's definitely I'm very, very excited. exciting for the, for the university and very exciting for also um, creating those beautiful relationships with, with the people on campus. Exactly. That open up infinite amount of doors. I love that. I love it myself. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for um, being here with us today. Is there anything that you would like for people to know about you, about your role, about the university that we haven't discussed as yet? Uh, no, I think, of course, uh, Life University, again, has a, a, a wonderful mission that should be shared with the entire world. Mm -hmm. um, part of that, of course, is supporting the College of Online Education. Yes, I love that. Well, I'm really excited for where the future is going with Life University and the College of Online Education. I am definitely thrilled and on the lookout as me, myself, I'm trying to understand um, the waters of how I'm going to, you know, be doing an online education and master's degree. Um, so I'm You can do it. I, you can do it. Time management, though. It's important. That. Time management is very important. So I see that. Once I get that down, <laughs> I'm not setting up myself a failure, I promise. Okay. <laughs> but once I get that down, I'm definitely very excited to hopefully be working with you a little bit more. Absolutely. And have, and have the opportunity to also keep sharing the beautiful vision and mission of the institution. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having um, a few minutes of your day to share with us everything that you're doing. How can people contact you? Uh, you can, of course, definitely reach me um, at, <laughs> at my email address, mm -hmm. jbush3052, I think, at Life University. Okay. Uh, doc, I, got a, I got the weirdest email address when I came on board. D no worries, but uh, <laughs> you can find me in the directory well, here at Life. Don't worry. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Please join us on our next episode. And this was Dr. Veronica Garcia and Dr. James Bush at Living Life at LifeU. Have a nice day. Bye.